Hello, all you beautiful light filled souls. Shalom. Shalom. I love using the word shalom as a greeting because it means may the peace of God envelop you. May the peace of God envelop you. Shalom. May the peace of God envelop you. You know that, oh my gosh, this is a word from the Lord right now. May the peace of God envelop you. There's no stress in the peace of God. There's no depression in the peace of God. May the peace of God envelop you. And there's a sanctuary space for you right now. There's a sanctuary space for you. In my Father's house, there are many abodes. Many abodes, many resting. One for you, one perfectly fit for you. Because Jesus goes and prepares a place for you. You hear him say that to everyone? Hear him say that to everyone. I am going to prepare a place for you. Listen to the language right there. You, you, you. Whoa, me? Me? Yes, you, me, I'm included. Yes, you also are included. That's in the Bible. It's a Bible verse. It's one of my favorites. Uh, in Ephesians, in the NIV. You gotta, oh my gosh. I am going to make the prayer place for you in my father's house. In my father's house. In my father's house. There are many abodes. A place of peace for you. And the peace of God and all of you. My peace I give to you, Jesus. As well as the world gives. My peace I give to you. So, yeah, let's talk about the Jesus Revolution. People who receive. Peace of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, I read in the scripture today that you can only say Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. It's only the cowardly and the proud. Refuse to say Jesus is Lord. You know that the sermon that Lonnie preached that turned Greg Laurie's heart. He was on a high school campus. Greg Laurie is there as a student. Lonnie is preaching. Lonnie the hippie. Preacher Lonnie Frisbee, and he said, He quoted Jesus and said, You're either with me or you are against me. You either gather with me or you scatter. We all must make a choice for ourselves. We all must make a choice for ourselves. So I tell you, and I ask you, is Jesus crucified on a cross for you? Does that warrant your trust? Now, you, it's up to you. I mean, like, seriously, do you want to look into? Do you want to look into <laughs> the implications and, and the profundity of of what I'm talking about. I mean, seriously. What I'm what I'm doing right now is expressing the a bit of frustration. A bit of frustration because I have run into a whole heck of a lot of pride.
And I'm wondering when we will all humble ourselves to receive, because I don't want to leave anybody out. I don't want to leave anybody out because you also are included. You also are included. Are you still with me? Did you survive that? That was long. That was dry, boring. Ah, get on with it, Daniel. You know, part of this is the weeding out process as well. Who's going to stick with me long enough to get to the good stuff? You know, Jesus never chased anybody down. They always came to him. Even though he's chasing us all down. And coming and just being a mystery. Who who is this mystery? He became so intriguing that he hid from everybody all the time. And they still found him. Ah, he's over here. 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 He is right here. You see? You are the point of revival. You are the point of revolution, my friend. You are the point of revolution and revival. You are where he is. He's over here. You see? I mean, you can look within, metaphorically speaking, I don't want you to cut open your chest with a bowie knife and look within that way. I want you to look within. Oh. Oh, yeah. Just behind your observation, there is God. There is Jesus Christ. Just behind your observation, the whole time. He is everything observing, and he is everything observing. He is everything observing. He is everything observing. You see that? Listen to that statement. He is everything observing. He is everything observing. You recognize your own divine identity. Did I scare anybody by saying that? Did I scare you by saying that? When you realize we're all one. When Jesus came, he prayed. This is his message. John 17, he prays for oneness we might all realize that we are one. In that day, you will know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And I am in you and you are in me. The Father is all. The Father is all. The Father is everything observing. And Jesus is everything observing. The Holy Spirit is everything observing. And you are everything observing. Because of your oneness with everything that's observing. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous place to be? It's peace right there. If you can accept it, it not have to be existential crisis, it can be peace through the gospel because Jesus is another. So am I, and so are you. That's what's wonderful about it. Everything is unique to its own identity. Everything is unique to its own identity. And Jesus would say, and he would remind us, I am intrinsic to you, and you are intrinsic to me. Because he is everything observing. And because you have your own individual, unique reality, an identity, so does he. 
It will always be from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. To glory. One blessing after another. Grace heaped upon more grace. It will always be that way because God is good. God is generous. God is love. God is love. God is love. And no one is good but God alone. No one is good but God alone. See, when you come into the great all, you're dealing with the very kind, good people. We would ask, this is our meditation for this evening, we would ask, and we would receive absorption both ways, intimacy, into me is seeing, He's into me, you see. Intimacy. Into me, you see. He's into me, you see. Intimacy. I want to come full circle. I want to reciprocate. I want to worship. I want to give of myself and to receive of you, Jesus. Father. Father. Well, that was very interesting. Very wonderful. Let us not become distracted by Back into observer mode, back into the movie, back into the matrix. You can stay in the movie theater a bit longer and ponder what you're seeing there in your life and all that that entails. Oh, the drama. Isn't it fun? Isn't it fun? definitely real just like any movie is real movies are real they exist you can watch them again and again and again movies are real as is your life okay you can also step into the theater rouse yourself oh i'm in the theater Wow, I was so into my this movie. I don't even know who I am. I don't even know who I am. I am. That's all I know. I am. The I am was having a Daniel experience. The I am will continue to go on to having a Daniel experience for as long as that lasts. But I can always come back. Peace. Using metaphorically the movie theater as an example here. You can always come into perfect peace. And enjoy the fact that you just came to the movie theater with all of your best friends. All of your family, your loved ones, every everyone that you love. Everyone that you love surrounds you. Everyone that you love surrounds you. Your kids, your wife, your mother and father. And everyone you love. I want to encourage you to love. I want to encourage you to love. This is the way. For this is the way.
Thank you for joining me. I'll continue as long as the spirit moves and the spirit's moving. Jesus is our rallying point. He is the one. He's the one. If somebody asked me today about the biblical Jesus versus a mystical Jesus. I'm like, well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I there's the real Jesus, and he is both the biblical Jesus and the mystical Jesus. Because once you meet him, and you really come into the flavor of Father's heart that he channels. Father's heart that he channels. I think. When you come into the flavor of that, you know who you're reading about in the Bible. You know that that's, that's tucked away. That's who people are dealing with in every story in the Gospels. You know, and they made him say some things. They made him say some things that Daniel would like to clarify on Jesus' behalf. And Jesus is telling me, leave it be, Daniel, leave it be. Leave it be. Leave it be. It's almost like it's almost like what he's showing me here is that like a moody teenager who has a certain view of their world. It's it's wrong, it's it's whatever. But it is what it is. It's that story of that disconnect and they want to be alone. I'm not a teenager anymore. It's they're they're a young lady, a young man. They want to retain their mistaken tone of distrust. They want to look for excuses to be away from me right now. And I'm respecting that, Jesus says. I'm respecting that. I'm respecting your need to be away from me right now. Part of the why they was here telling me this is because because Jesus is reaching out to you right now and he's saying maybe it's time to come home. Maybe it's time to forgive. Whatever perceived grievances, and you're like, well, you're perfect. You just don't want to face. You don't want to face. <clears throat> this is Daniel's interpretation. Of it. You don't want to face your own profound failure. To love. You don't want to admit your role in the crucifixion and the characters you played in that drama. You were every character. And I want to remind you uh, that the most important character that you are is the one on the cross. You were every character. You did it to yourself. You did this to yourself. And you're every character. You're the one motivating the one who hates yourself. Think about that. Think about the eternality of that moment and the full circle of this moment right now. 
hammer that one, crucified that other one, is being forgiven by the love of that crucifixion. You understand me? Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? I see it. I see it. I see it. And this is the most important thing you can see. Because this is making the good news applicable to you. Everyone being forgiven. For murdering yourself. And you are the one forgiving you. And you are the one receiving forgiveness. If you're with me, that's fine. I'm receiving forgiveness. I don't know about you when you're going to ever get around to forgiving yourself. When are you going to get around to forgiving yourself? This is what Daniel's channeling right now. Isn't this awesome? Isn't this awesome? I forgive you for killing me. I forgive you for murdering me. I forgive you for murdering me. I forgive you for murdering me. Say it to yourself. I forgive you for murdering me. 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 I forgive you. Now, all of a sudden, you're seeing every other person who's ever wronged you in this because you realize I am one with you all. And I took offense at you all. Because in some big way or small way, you're murdering me. I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine how have my children ever murdered me. My children have loved me so completely. They've revealed the heart of Jesus to me. They're, they're, they saved me with the love of Jesus that they came to show me. They saved me. And we're here to save one another and say, I forgive you. Forgiveness will heal the world. The host of heaven has spoken. Forgiveness will heal the world. Forgiveness will heal the world. And I need some healing. I'm sure you need some healing. Guess what? Forgiveness will heal you. Forgiveness will heal you. What does forgiveness mean? Well, ask. And you shall receive. Ask God. Become what you are, the child in the room, the toddler in the room, surrounded by those who love you, the one who came out of the movie into the theater room, the dark theater room, surrounded by everyone you love most. And you're like, I was so absorbed in my own story, I don't know who I am. This is death of the ego. You come out of the story, you come out of the movie, you are so plugged into of your life, you're in the theater with all your most loved ones surrounding you. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You're just trusting, well, I'm surrounded by love, it'll come to me in due time. And you let them give you clues to who you are. You let them inform you by your love. You are created by your love. See, you're created by your love with everyone you love. You are created in and by love by everyone you get to love because you're only ever surrounded by your most loved, dearest. You have to teach you and show you. 
now bring it back to your story. The same is true here. In your real life. Real life. We can call it that. It's as real as any movie, let me assure you. Back here in your real life, the same thing is true. You're only out of this room by your dearest friends. Have we lost our way? Of course. Everyone has lost their way just as much as you have in this movie of your life. Show them compassion. Say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It's okay. We'll all get it. And you get to be defined as you are in this matrix, surrounded by everyone who loves you most. And you get to love them. 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 The love revolution. You get to love them. You get to love them. So, the Jesus revolution. Oh yeah, there is a movie by that title. I just I just saw it um, in the theater a few days ago, Tuesday, twice in the same day. I'm not going to talk about that movie. It's great. I love it. Talk about Lonnie Frisbee for a moment. You know his story. His story, hippie, right? I hate Ashbury. Oh, no, he's proud of that. And he went out to this canyon one day. Took some acid. Stripped down naked. Out there all alone and screamed up to the heavens, God, if you're real, show yourself. Jesus came. Jesus came to meet Lonnie Frisbee. Jesus showed up and said some pretty fierce things. To Lonnie. It was a bit intimidating what Jesus had to share with Lonnie. You see, there's all kinds of sides to Jesus. Daniel experiences a certain side. Lonnie experiences a certain side. You experience a certain side. There are many sides to Jesus. But he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he says to Lonnie. All right, you know what? Jesus says, you'll recognize them, my true followers, by their fruit. You know what? I saw the fruit of love in Lonnie's life. Fruit of love in Lonnie's life. The fruit of Jesus pouring through Lonnie. And Lonnie being so desperate and so wounded that he is doubting that Jesus would have him times and then just so empowered and exhilarated and he believes and that's what Lonnie did he believed he believed he believed he believed and it created heaven on earth when he believed that's what happens when you believe. Since you're connected to the divine. Jesus knows John chapter 15. In case you're lost. John chapter 15.
You create heaven on earth when you believe Jesus. When he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You are mine. You belong to me. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. I read a scripture verse from Psalm 139. Oh, it's Psalm 119, verse 125. Don't look it up, please. Don't. Don't. Don't even bother. <clears throat> but what the experience of that taught me was was it seemed very rare to me for anyone to say i love you lord in the bible see jesus when he and this is love not that we loved god but that god loved us and gave his son. And this is love. This is love. Not that we love God. This first John 4 10. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see? God your Father, God your Father sent you His Son to rescue all the lost and fallen. I am one of the lost and fallen, but He came to save. Jesus came to love. Not that I love God. I don't, I didn't love God. I didn't love God. But I guess what I love him like a friend. And I'm not the best friend in the world. I am not the best friend Jesus has ever had. I love him like a friend. That's, that's all I can say. You know, when Jesus comes to you and says, Do you agape me? And we say back to him, Ephileo. He asks again, Do you agape me? I phileo you. And then he comes a third time, Do you phileo me? These are Greek words describing two different kinds of love. This is what's happening in the Greek in the exchange between Jesus and Peter in the end of John. Gospel. Just to catch you up to speed. Other-centered, self-giving love 
it's agape. A rudimentary, it's kind of crude way of describing what agape is. Other-centered, self-giving love. Other-centered, self-giving love. It's one who really adopts the reality that every other person you ever meet is your best friend in disguise and doesn't know it. They're just lost. You're surrounded by love ones. You know that? You're surrounded by loved ones. So everyone you ever meet is one of your loved ones that surrounds you in disguise. They disguised it from themselves. They don't even know. And neither did you. So you just get to love your best friends and your your wife and your children in everyone you meet, and your father and your mother and your grandfather and great grandmother. Adopt them all. Second cousin twice removed if you want to get that distant related. How big will your love be? That's the question. How much will you love yourself in this experience of your life on planet Earth? In this experience, you go to have an experience where you see others wake up to the love in their own heart. As this is not love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. He's the propitiation of our sins, the expiator of our sins, the remover of everything that isn't love. Do you see the reality of that now? I think I do. I think I do. I do, I do indeed. He expiates from me all that is not of love's kind. He expiates from me all that is not of love's kind. And so I, I pray, Lord, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Expiate from me. Let the re full realization. See, what, what the claim here is that it's done. He's taken away our sins. He's atoned for them. That He has expiated them from our personage. And so, beloved, if God lo so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's the next verse. 1 John 4.11 Isn't that marvelous? And so, you, the one who is receiving the word of God right now, you have to be the one who believes Jesus in his word and turn this place from heaven, hell, into heaven. Okay? You, dear one, you. Change the world like Monty Fifty did. And your love is going to explode because you receive the love expressed to you from God your Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and all the forgiveness, all the forgiveness all of the ways that you failed to love all your sins. And God, without asking you permission, sent him to be the atoning sacrifice. The sacrifice. The propitiation, the expiation of all. Not that he was our substitute whipping boy, you see. But 
as the one who received all of our wrath for our misunderstanding and the way we have castigated God's character and hated him without cause. We have to realize that it was without cause that you ever hated God and that you ever did anything in defiance of the one who is God. That you tried to break the fabric of the universe with any act that was not love. You have to face every single one of those and be exposed for what you did. Going into this full well knowing that you're already forgiven. So there's nothing to be afraid of. The perfect love casts out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. Why are you afraid? Fear has to do with punishment. Well, it's not exactly how it's rendered in every translation. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Proof. Proof. He must be spirit. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us. We have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. Not be afraid. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. We can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear. No fear. Because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. May we experience his perfect love that sets us free to be fullest expression of love that we can be in this world to ourselves, to all, every other version of you. For all other versions of you, Christ is all, and in all, God is all, and in all, and you are all, and in all, because you're one with us. Every other observation of the divine consciousness, every other fractal of the soul of God, you are one with us. May we experience fully his perfect love, God's perfect love, Jesus' perfect love. <sighs> oh, wow. The other translations say fear involves punishment, fear has punishment, fear hath torment. See, fear itself is torment. Fear itself is punishment. Fear is the construct that hell is built out of and from. Fear hath torment. Fear has punishment. Fear involves torment. See it differently now? Fear involves punishment. Fear is 
by suspicion. You're suspicious of God. Is he really that good? I don't think so. I don't. You know, you're not intimate with someone that you're suspicious of. Fear hath pain. These are just some of the other translations. Fear has to do with punishment. Fear hath torment. Fear involves pain. Fear has punishment. There's two choices before you, and you hold the key. You hold the key. Where will you spend the currency of your attention? On fear or on love? Perfect love drives out all fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. So come, perfect love. Have your will, have your way in me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me this evening. Feels like it's coming to a close here. We love each other because he first loved us. This is what I'm trying to drive home here. Have your own love encounter with the incarnation of perfect love, Jesus Christ. This is the gate. He is the gate to heaven, to paradise. In heaven and paradise is within you. You are surrounded by all manner of beings who love you, who love you, who love you, who love you. I pray that you can connect with that love. I pray that I will connect with that love. And that we can get on to this wonderful business of loving one another. Okay? That is all for this evening. That is all for this evening. Thank you for joining me. This has been a channeling session with Daniel Levitt. I just want to say uh, to Tanya, thank you for joining. And for Laura. Okay, great. He is love. God is love. Uh, Anya says, I heard his voice once in the morning. He told me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's amazing. And Laura, new Lani. That's cool. You became a Christian in 1974. That's awesome. I wasn't even born yet. That's okay. I'm a hippie at heart. Uh, in my previous life, I was a hippie, though. Okay. For the, for the little comments in the comment section. Thank you for joining me this evening. This has been Awakening with King Love It. I too am awakening. You're awakening with me. Just wanted to end by saying shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. May you be captivated by the peace of God that surrounds you. May you be captivated. Thank you for joining. All right. Check, check it out. Um, peace out. Okay. Parting is such a good song. Bye.